Hey everybody, it's Alex from Heavy New York. We are at the Bowery Ballroom today, and today we are one of with one of New York City's own Life of Agony. Thank you, Alan, for being here. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah. So before we get, uh, you know, first things always first, it's been about a year since the release of your latest record, A Place Where There's No More Pain. What I was curious about is being that it was, what, 11 years since the release of Broken Valley. You know, I was 11 when that record came out. Right? Yeah. But um, was that, that was obviously a fresh start for Life of Agony, right? It wasn't just a follow-up to Broken Valley. Um, no, you know, a lot of time had passed. That was our first major label record, Broken Valley, mm -hmm. and we had a really terrible experience. And it took about 11 years to get over that experience to want to make new music again. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But I'd imagine that taking that time off maybe like made you and Mina and Joey and everybody like rekindle their love for the music, right? Well, we were playing all through that time. We were touring. We just weren't putting out records. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, one question I really wanted, I was curious about was, because a lot of people associated you with the New York City hardcore movement, but, and, you know, with arguing a bunch with the old hardcore heads, they're like, oh, they're more metal, they're not hardcore, or like, you know, many people would think if it's hardcore, to be sick of it all, or agnostic front. I was curious, was it more of just, you cut your teeth in the hardcore scene, or would you consider your music to be like, have that hardcore vibe to it? It's funny, because we never labeled ourselves hardcore. We love hardcore music. We grew up, you know, at, at CBGB's and Lemoore's and watching Agnostic Front and eventually opening up for them and Sheer Terror and um, all Biohazard and uh, even Carnivore on Negative Night. Um, so we came up in that scene. And um, I think by the time River Runs Red came out, it was a mix of metal, me, you know, metallic sounding guitar sounds and it had those hardcore grooves. The lyrics were very much down to earth and, and, and you know, from the heart. So that aspect was hardcore. Um, it was kind of a mix and match of hardcore metal and, you know, classic rock that we grew up on, Pink Floyd and Beatles and stuff. Yeah. I, I, they've, I've always thought that you guys and Hatebreed were like the two bands that really bridged hardcore and metal together. Yeah, I, I always consider us more of a, a crossover band, if anything, uh, because we had those melodic vocals. Um, but, you know, and also from record to record, the sound changed and we evolved. And it, it's a lot of fun to take songs from each record that sound completely different from one another and put them in the set. There's a really nice hills and valleys in the set with really intense songs, kind of mellow songs, different kind of introspective uh, songs. So it's a nice mixture when you put them all together in a set. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, one thing that I really wanted to talk about with you, you know, you and I are both SVA alumni, actually, so I wanted either you or Joey Z specifically. But um, as a lot of people know, you have your new comic book series out, and you work in the world of visual art just as much as music. What I was curious is, do you channel a similar creative energy? Is there a similar creative energy that you put into visual art as well as your music, or is it a completely separate mind frame working with the two different mediums? The one thing I learned about myself after doing this for so many years, both music and art, is I'm really into the idea of coming up with an idea, scratching on a napkin, and seeing it all the way through to something tangible and whether it be a comic book character or a song, uh, just that whole process is what I love and what I chase, and that's the, that's the, the high for me. Um, and that's what I get the most satisfaction out of, seeing something come from nothing to something real. Of course. Is it at all, because you mentioned that there's a similar, like, creative feedback to it in terms of the lifespan of your work um, but I'd imagine that you know obviously you know with Life of Agony you're working with three other people in music does maybe like there's a little more of cr uh, independent creativity because it's solely you doing the artwork um, there's a lot of isolation and a lot of long hours by myself drawing uh, so the balance of being with the group doing music and then <clears throat> and then seeing that reaction firsthand playing live shows like tonight um, is a nice balance because there's so much uh, time alone doing the books. And so I don't think I could do one without the other, really. And, and you, you, so you just answered my next question. It's fair to say that maybe by working with visual art, you take that into Life of Agony, and obviously being in Life of Agony helps influence your art. 
Yeah, I would say that I, I definitely am. Um, I have my my feet in both worlds, and um, and even with the with the music stuff, I um, have always done the t-shirts designs since day one. I, I can't even count how many t-shirts I've designed over the nearly 30 years of doing this band, um, along with website designs and and everything else. Um, so even like storyboards for videos and. Uh, album artwork um, it's really endless uh, you know I really put myself in a hundred percent into everything that I do whether it's music or art so however I could uh, use some of those skills and and the same goes for the uh, the comic book stuff because I'm constantly doing uh, promo videos or commercials where I'll write music and perform music for those uh, those clips to you know promote the comic books and stuff very interesting so before we go I want to thank you so much for your time Anytime. you make you know it's funny because everybody at SVA on, the only musicians they know are Gerard Way from My Chemical Romance and Jared Leto for me it was Life of Agony and they were like who's that uh, just uh, is there anything we could be expecting from Life of Agony obviously you're finishing up this tour with Silver Tomb is there anything you'd like to promote with the band or with your uh, comic book series well, um, yeah, we're, we're finishing up the U.S. leg with Silver Tomb here um, just in a couple of days. And then we head over to Europe for a full headline tour that goes through November. Um, we have a big announcement coming next week. Um, and then we're off to do a new record uh, for 2019. Uh, we already started writing that. And then uh, in, the, in the book world... Uh, there's going to be a Beauty of Horror, Ghost of Christmas coloring book coming out for Halloween. Wow. Yeah. 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 So we don't have to wait 11 years for another Life of Agony record? Definitely not. Yeah. yeah. Well, Alan, thank you so much for your time. Everybody, we are here with Alan Robert of Life of Agony. Be sure to check out his latest comic book series and pick up a place where there is no more pain if you haven't already. We'll see you next time on Heavy New York, everybody.